This time on The Gadget Show, it's our summer special musical spectacular. <laughs> OK, we're lying about the musical bit, but it will be spectacular. Yes. As Susie and I go head to head to try and create the perfect gadget holiday. Better get shoveling, eh? I get all hot and bothered testing gadget barbecues with Super Chef Simon Rimmer. Oh. And I fly to sunny Los Angeles to test some very techy sunglasses. Really rather good. There's sun, sand, shades, hot tubs and John in shorts. Summer doesn't get much hotter than this, unless you're in a volcano. Show summer special. Oh, yes. Isn't it great? Summer is finally here, and apparently it's going to be a real hottie. Yeah. And the only thing better than a hot and steamy summer is a hot and steamy summer packed to the gunnels with gags. Yes. Oh yes, and this show is certainly packed to the gunnels with gags. In fact, it's so packed that we haven't even got time to carry on talking. We're going to get straight on with this week's challenge, which of course involves the lovely Little Miss Sunshine. That is. Susie Parry. Thank you. And the gadget shows bootylicious beach boy Otis Dealey. Oh, thanks very much. We were told to meet at a travel agent. Here it is. But we weren't there for a deal. Good morning. Morning. You got something for us? Oh, oh. Dear Susie and Otis, your challenge is to go head to head to create two dream gadget holidays on a farm near Wolverhampton. <laughs> you have until lunchtime tomorrow to turn these well used stables into techie vacations of your dreams. The winner will be chosen by a celebrity family in need of a break. <laughs> Wish you were here. Wolverhampton, that's my old stomping ground. That's where I'm from. You don't stand a chance. You can't get help from the locals, are we? <laughs> Hi-ho, <laughs> Wolverhampton. As we headed towards our destination, we were blissfully unaware of the horror that awaited us. Well, I think it's absolutely obvious what we've got to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Make the perfect holiday. Yeah. So, loads of action, the great outdoors, action. Susie, fresh Susie. air. Action? Yeah. Susie, vacation equals chill out. But when we finally arrived on site, we realised we had our work cut out. No way! What's this? This has got to be turned into an amazing holiday. I've got a hole in the ceiling. I've got I've got doo doo on the floor. Oh, it stinks as well. How am I meant to turn this <laughs> into a luxury holiday? <laughs> we each had an identical area where we could build our gadget holidays. Outside the barn would be where we'd have our accommodation, and inside would be where we'd create our individual holiday experience. We also had a large collection of specially selected tech to choose from. All of it designed so we could create the right holiday mood. And for me, that was going to be my very own adventure playground. I, on the other hand, wanted mine to become a relaxing beach holiday. The first part of the challenge was to sort out the accommodation for our holidays. I can spend days choosing the perfect hotel, but with the clock ticking and the pressure on, we had no time to play with. We each had a bunch of tents to choose from, and making the right decision could mean the difference between victory and defeat. I want something that's rough, rugged and ready to go up. My aim was to go for the perfect action accommodation for my action holiday. The dry van is a great tent that simply hooks onto the back of pretty much any modern people carrier, allowing you to extend the back of your vehicle, turning it into a sleeping area. So all you have to do is attach the inner tent, which is really, really simple, and it's great. Especially for the surf or something like that. Meanwhile, I'd found a much more impressive tent for my first choice of holiday accommodation. Now this is more like it. It's the Coastline 8 Deluxe, and it's massive! With 19 and a half square metres of living space and two metres headroom, it can comfortably accommodate eight people. And in high winds, there's no need to worry about having such an enormous tent, as its unique design and structure ensures that it stays put. Otis was quite chuffed with himself, but I wasn't going to be outdone. For my second choice, I was going for a bigger luxury tent. The Globemaster off-road trailer is built on a galvanised steel chassis with heavy-duty suspension and shocks and can go pretty much anywhere. And when you get to the anywhere, the trailer tent has an amazing array of kit. 
So the tent and the awning go up in literally about five minutes. You've got your main bedroom up here, and then you've got space down here for another couple of people to sleep. Outside, loads of living space. And then you've got sockets for your lights and your gadgets. And look at this, a fully fitted, gorgeous kitchen with proper china. There's also a two ring hob and fridge freezer, which can run for weeks from the two 12 volt batteries. Who says you have to rough it just because you're camping? I like a bit of luxury, mate. And this trailer, it's completely luxurious. I think the judges are going to love it. I agreed with Susie that for size, luxury and all around tentastic camping, a trailer tent was the way to go. But I reckoned I trumped her with my final choice, the Camplet Royal trailer. This is 34 square metres of unadulterated luxury. All from a simple trailer. With its 13-inch alloy wheels, the camplet is small and light enough to stow in a garage or shed, but it folds out and out and out again and just keeps on growing. Look, you can attach side annexes, loads of them, using a simple zip attachment. There's one here. Look, I've got one here and one there. This is my kitchenette, yeah? Running water, fridge, three-hob cooker, need I say more? And look at the beds. They've only got wooden slats. This is, this is better than luxury. This is next level. This is total decadence. It's perfect for my relaxing beachside holiday. <sighs> We'd chosen the accommodation for our holiday challenge. Next, we had to create the whole holiday experience. And that was gonna be very difficult. Where on earth do I start? Oh. What did you think? Because you hate camping. I do. I'm basically allergic to the outside okay. world. <laughs> and, you know, even I would venture out if I could stay in accommodation that luxurious. Are they both as easy to assemble as you made them look? They are easy to assemble. I mean, I loved the Howling Moon stuff that I ended up with because you've got that upstairs, you know, and it literally all comes out of the trailer. Really simple, Brilliant. very intuitive. And not only are they easy to assemble, Jason, but to pack away as well. They're not... Good point. Yeah, not that difficult at all. Well, guys, what can I say? You've, you've really set the bar high with that accommodation. You've got your work cut out because now, of course, you've got to turn that farmyard into a holiday destination that's going to be judged by a celebrity family. Yeah, trust me, you're going to love what we do. Coming up after the break... John decides to test the latest in high-tech sunglasses by flying out to sunny California. Well, he would do, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and I get into a sunshine state of mind testing the Gadget Show's top five barbecues, along with top chef Simon Rimmer. It gives... <laughs> Look over there. <laughs> no it one is. Welcome back. Now, I want to talk to you about sunglasses. And I'm not just talking about any old pair of dark lenses to stop you squinting when the daylight gets too much to bear. No, I'm talking about clever, high-tech sunglasses like these. Shades that not only soak up the sunshine, but also incorporate special features like Bluetooth headsets, USB memory sticks and video cameras. They sound like perfect examples of gadget convergence. But are they truly groundbreaking or just gaudy gimmicks. Well, to find out, I took three of the most interesting pairs off to a place where the sun was almost guaranteed to shine. With 320 sunny days a year and over 70 miles of sandy beach, Los Angeles is a sun worshipper's paradise and a very agreeable place for me to test my gadget sunglasses. Look at this! A perfect sunny day! I've got my ice cream, the Factor 50 and three pairs of the latest gadget sunglasses each with a distinguishing high-tech feature. Hmm. To test my sunglasses, I took them each on a tour of a different part of LA, starting with the seafront and this pair of CK Calvin Kleins with a rather useful USB stick hidden in the arm. Now, normally, if you carry a USB stick, you're forever at risk of losing it. The best you can do is attach it to your key ring or something like that. But with these, it's always close to hand, or close to your head, anyway and they feel very comfortable on first impressions. The CKs were very light and having such big lenses did provide shade for much of my peripheral vision. Ideal for taking in the sights on the beach. But what about the main event, their USB functionality? I decided to back up my holiday snaps onto my shades. A simple drag and drop process. The silly thing is, of course, once you've uh, stuck the arm into your USB socket, sunglasses themselves are pretty useless. 
They stay on all right, but it's very uncomfortable. That bit digs in rather. Still, there's definitely something to be said for having your USB stick so handy. But how did they score for all-round style? I deferred to the opinion of the fashion-conscious beach crowd. Ah, uh, they look too much like that retro Ray-Ban. Right. I like those glasses. I like them. They're, They're cool. cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like this one. Awesome. Because yeah. if you, if it was a brand, it should go around the rims to show what yeah. kind of... Yeah, oh. what kind of brand it yeah, is. Yeah, and you've got a oh. USB stick. That's pretty awesome. You like that? <laughs> well, I don't ever use those, That's ridiculous. so... <laughs> In the end, my USB glasses got a mixed response from the beautiful people of Venice Beach. But aesthetically, I found myself on the side of the retro enthusiasts. Next up were the Tri-Spec sunglasses with built-in Bluetooth earphones, which I took for a podcast tour of Chinatown. They're better than other Bluetooth sunglasses I've tried. Consider those fiddly articulated earpieces. Instead, these ones come out on extendable wires from the arm, so you can really get a comfortable fit. Right, I better pair them with my iPod. Connecting the glasses via Bluetooth was a piece of cake, but I soon found a few creeping niggles. Central Plaza in Chinatown. The sound quality is OK rather than spectacular. I quite liked adjustable sized earpieces, so there was a rather more secure fit in my ear. And while the controls were simple in theory, in practice it was a different matter. It all works fairly well, apart from the fact uh, I can't seem to get it to uh, change tracks. Hmm. However, there was one useful addition. Ooh, incoming call! Now, I should be able to answer that using the middle button on the left arm. Let's try it. Seems to be working. Hello! I'm in Los Angeles in Chinatown. It's great fun. But I can't stop now because I'm filming. Speak to you later. Bye. Seems to work quite well, actually. Pretty good. Get the incoming number and everything. And what about the style of the Tri-Spec? Styling? Styling. Very styling. Oh, nice. Looking nice. Oh, it looks good on you. Oh, uh, it looks good. Yeah, it looks oh, way. Good. What do you think of those? Yeah, those are pretty neat. I'd buy that. Oh, excellent. So, the good folks of Chinatown appreciated the looks of my glasses. But for me, it didn't make up for their clunky controls and subpar sounds. On to my final pair, the rather ostentatious Immortal Action Eye Gears with onboard camcorder, which I thought would suit a tour of LA's famous Mulholland Drive. This is a lovely classic LA road, Mulholland Drive, with a great view of the city. And as you'd expect, these immortals doing a good job of cutting down on the glare. They fit quite firmly round the back of the head, possibly too firmly, but it'd be pretty reassuring if you were doing lots of sport. Although a little bulky, you really wouldn't know there was an inbuilt camera, and they only weigh 65 grams. That's all very well, but now to the nitty gritty of these sunglasses, which is their video taking capabilities. It's actually quite simple. You press this button down here, I press this other button for a second, and we're recording. Let's go. The Immortals record video at 25 frames per second onto their 4 gigabytes of internal memory, which can then be uploaded via USB. The quality is really surprisingly good. I mean, obviously it's not high definition and the sound quality is not great, but it's a lot better than a lot of action cameras I've seen. And I found they worked well in both sunny and shady conditions. And considering it's in a pair of glasses, it's really rather good. But what would the locals make of my glasses? To find out, I drove down to fashion-conscious Rodeo Drive. Very flashy. <laughs> I don't like this. You don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, too sporty. It's just, it's a very trendy. Yeah. They're very unique. Futuristic. What is this in the middle, too? It's a little camera. Is that like a camera? Yeah, so you can record. <laughs> They're amazing. Really? I don't like them. <laughs> really? I'd f*** them. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> and with that, it's time for the G ratings. The Tri-Specs get two Gs. The comfortable design can't make up for poor sound quality and some features that just didn't work. It's three Gs for the CKs with their nice retro design and a novelty feature that could actually be useful. But the Immortals win with four Gs. Their style might not be to everyone's taste, but they're a great fun idea with surprisingly good camera performance. Lovely item, John. Oh, thank you. I, I like the idea of these sunglasses with mm. the camera, but I'm not sure that they suit me. Actually, they make you look rather cross. <laughs> I am a little bit cross, actually, because next week is the last in the current series of The Gadget Show, but we will be back in August. However, you don't have to wait until August to get your Gadget Show fix. Because every week I shall be appearing on our website on our Gadget Show web TV programme with the lovely Dion South. Yes, you can get an episode every week while we're off air.
In fact, there's a new edition of Web TV every week of the year. Just go to our website at 5.tv slash gadget show and you'll find Web TV in pride of place at the top of our homepage. Each week, John takes a detailed look at new tech. Dion brings you the latest gadget news and Otis does his own gadget investigations. you two here's a bit of fun yeah right these are water pistols ak-47 aquifers to be oh. exact obviously all water pistols are fantastic fun in the summer oh. these though are oh. very special it's got, because it's got a magazine yeah they're battery operated and there is a magazine here and that will last you 60 seconds now they fire four bullets of water oh. per second ah! and the range is eight meters quick fun for the summer oh right in the face <laughs> <laughs> anyway, something else now for your garden that's less wet. Here's Jace with the Gadget Show's top five barbecues. Go ahead! When summer eventually arrives, there's nothing we Brits like better than to go outside into the garden and fire up the barbecue. Now, to test my barbecue tech, I need an expert. And let's be honest, I don't want to upset anyone, but... Barbecuing, it's not a woman's job. It's a manly man's job. And the man that can is TV chef Simon Rimmer, who, when he's not cooking on the telly, has been running his own restaurants for the last 20 years. There we go. You like my gear? Nice. Yeah? I want it for the professional stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice. We've got uh, 20 barbecues, and we've got quite a difficult job because we've got to reduce them down to just the top five. Simon and I fired them all up and then set about checking how easy they were to use. You've got four separate burners, so if you want to run something cold and simmer at this end, that's absolutely cool, and then have the fire going really, really high at this end. How good the barbecue food tasted? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> That's really nice, isn't it? That's delicious, actually. And most importantly, how much they'd impress your mates. It's called barbecue. Skew. Yeah. See what they're doing there? Yeah, with a skewer. Yeah. And, and basically, it's based around the, the secret idea where we rotisserie all of our goods. So it means that basically you're getting an even cook on it. This is a cracker, actually. I, I isn't do, it? I do really like this. It's pretty effective. It gives... <laughs> <laughs> Look over there. <laughs> no it one gives. Knew. Well, I've got to be honest with you, I'm barbecued out. But it's all been worth it because Simon and I have come up with the Gadget Show's top five barbecues. And number five is the Landman Geo's portable charcoal fired barbecue. You can lower it, higher it, whatever you want to do. So obviously, cool. when things are getting hot, then you can kind of bring it up a little bit. When yeah. you want a little bit more heat through there, it's absolutely great. Its simplicity is astonishing, and we both thought it just looked mad enough to impress your mates. Yeah, taste the coals on that. You can really yeah. taste it. Mm. Mm. Number four is the Kadak Leisure Chef Gas Barbecue. Breakfast time, eggs on there. Look. With the interchangeable half flat sided and half ribbed non stick griddle, this is a great bit of kit for all kinds of cooking. Professional, did you see that? This is great, Chase. <laughs> Number three is the Pro Q Frontier. It comes with a portable kettle barbecue on the top, as well as a porcelain coated water pan in the middle, which lets you smoke food. I love the concept of smoking your fish fillets. Look at that oh, sea bass in there. Nice bit of sea bass. If you want bragging rights over who's got the trendiest barbecue, then get one of these bad boys. Oh, my mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Number two is the Grand Hall Tea Titanium Gas Barbecue. Well, the thing I noticed primarily is when you put the lid down on this fire, the heat Incredible. Builds up is massive. Yeah. And then when you lift it up, it's tremendous. So that means if you're going to cook anything large, yes. it will be brilliant. It's retaining heat. The Crossray Infrared Tech makes the barbecue grill 40% more efficient, and we both thought it looked stunning. If Apple designed a barbecue, it would look something like this. Well, this would be the eye barbecue, wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And in at number one, it's the Weber Summit. What we've got, we've got a whole range of burners. Look at the quality of all those. Cooking, gentle, that is beautiful. Big on size, big on features, and big on taste. I think that is as good as you'll ever get on a barbecue, to be honest.
So what do you think, guys? Yeah. Do you like it? I was going to ask actually if I'm allowed to stand here by the barbecue because it's such a man thing, isn't That's it? Of course you, you are. Actually, yeah, back yeah I do apologise for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, was to get, I was trying to mail bond with some in the show. Well, I mean, this, this Weber Summit really is as good as it gets. I mean, there are some features in it, like the fact there's a tray that collects all the, mm. all the oil, so you yes. don't have to clean it as many well, times. I, I like Stop these it, you. Look. I've used these before, <laughs> and I quite like the fact they're really quite easy to clean because have of the stainless steel finish. It is very strong. Yeah. Well, have a proper one, darling. All right. Oh, it is, John. It is. It's got the rotisserie. It's got the uh, infrared for the rotisserie, which is again is a very sort of state-of-the-art <laughs> technology for barbecuing. Warming uh, cupboard. Food warm underneath. And most importantly, guys, look, areas to prepare food. Often forgotten about with, with oh, barbecues. Oh, it's good at night as well with your little LED lights. Up it's here. got everything. How can I? How can I put it? Enjoy. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Welcome back. Now, I hope you've managed to get your hands on one of these. It's the Gadget Show magazine. Yeah, it's packed with the kind of stuff you'd expect to see on the show, plus a little bit more. And look, there's a, there's a picture of me in That's there. Nice. And uh, there's a, an editorial I did, yeah. a uh, Q&A section. And okay, I think yeah. there's a little bit... we get the picture there. OK, it's £5. Let's move on to the challenge, shall we? <laughs> That's right. Susie and I were facing a summer showdown special. What we had to do was create the perfect hideaway holiday. And our location was a farmyard off the M6 in Wolverhampton. Nothing wrong with Wolverhampton, good <laughs> accent. Right, so I'd gone for um, an action-type holiday with loads of extreme adventure-type activities. And I wanted to create a beach holiday paradise. Just relax, lay back, and let the cares of the world just fall from your shoulders. Oh, yeah. But there was going to be no lying back on sun loungers and hanging around for us because a surprise celebrity family were coming to judge our holidays. Tick tock, tick tock, the time was ticking. With our accommodation in place, we still had a lot of work to do to build the rest of our gadget holidays. I wanted to create the ultimate action holiday. And I wanted to turn my very well-used stable into a relaxing beach holiday. Right, I need some sand, lots of sand. I need greenery. And heat. I need a floor. Then I can put palm trees up. Mountain biking and some flowing mountain stream and a waterfall. Sun, sea, relaxation, the works. We also needed tech, a lot of tech. So after some research, planning and pleading... Yeah, massive. Oh, it's his answer machine. It was time to get to work. OK, so I want a beach. And for that, I need sand. Lots of it. So here it is. 20 tonnes of it. <laughs> Release the sand! I hadn't realised there'd be quite so much of it, though. Better get shoveling, eh? While me and some helpers got to work shoveling, Susie got her own floor covered. And I got it covered quickly. This is high-tech turf. Now, it looks like grass and it feels like grass, but it's not grass at all. It's actually made from recycled plastic. Up to 15 bottles go into every square metre. And it's UV stable, so it won't fade in the sun. And the best thing is, you don't have to mow it. With my grass down and Otis still shoveling, I was able to forge ahead. Yes, yeah, so we put that one there. I brought in some freestanding indoor and outdoor fountains. Yes! And some hidden outdoor speakers cleverly disguised as rocks, which can blast out 40 watts of music. After about an hour, we'd finally got the beach spread, but there was no time to rest. Just what every fake beach needs. An LED palm tree. <sighs> Each of these three-in-one palm trees has 22 leaves made up of 3,350 ultra-bright LEDs. OK, so I know I'm not actually by the sea, but I can make it feel as though I am with this. This Natural Pure is an air purifier and filter that gets rid of pollen, smells and other airborne nasties. It also claims to create a fresh and exhilarating atmosphere mimicking that of the seaside. Ah, sea breeze. Combined with a carbon fibre patio heater to warm things up and these cool digital posters with some sunny scenes from my holiday, the stable was taken on a decidedly tropical feel. Now, you probably noticed that I had quite a few bare walls in there to cover and that is where this comes in. With this semi-pro 24.6 megapixel Sony camera, I can take a picture with enough resolution to print out a three and a half metre high poster. Oh, yeah. Using my Wi-Fi all-in-one Canon PicSmart on borderless printing mode, 
I was able to print out a sequence of A4 sheets to make up a beautiful wall covering poster. I got an even bigger wall to cover though, and for that I needed a bigger camera. Like this absolutely gorgeous Hasselblad H4D 50 megapixel camera. Oh, I'm going to get such a shot from this. Normally used for high-end professional shoots, I used it to take a photo with enough detail to be blown up as big as I liked, using this massive large format printer and a couple of five metre rolls of canvas. Right, now have a look at this. This is the picture that I took earlier, and the printer is currently printing the bottom section of it, so it's going to print it in two sections. And look at it, it's just so beautiful. While Susie ran around like a madwoman, I decided to take a much more relaxed approach in decorating my walls. For that, I've got this super bright projector. The Optima EX785 is a brand new DLP projector with interchangeable lenses. Forget HD ready, when the content is available, this is 3D ready. With this cool beach animation and this four meter screen, I've managed to cover my ugly wall. Oh look. Seagulls. With time ticking away, I brought some action to my action holiday with four ultra-realistic mountain bike simulators and a massive climbing wall. Meanwhile, I upped my relaxation quota with a relaxing energy pod, which claims to be the ultimate power napping device. <laughs> and then the final piece of the jigsaw arrived. This is the hottest hot tub around. <laughs> This 10 by 8 self-cleaning tub can fit 10 adults and has all sorts of massaging jet arrangements for maximum relaxation. I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to help me win the challenge. So in your face, Susie Perry. Yeah. In your face! What's that? This, my friend, is what's going to win me the challenge. Allow me to introduce the swim spa. You what? The 19-foot swim spa is a water jet pool with an action twist. These two nozzles down here create a current that you can swim against, so you can turn them up or down, depending on how hard you want to swim. It's sort of like a water-based treadmill. Well, it will be when it's full up. We'd got all our tech in place and the holidays were looking good, but there were still some gaps to fill. If I was going to win this challenge, I needed to throw in as many extra gadgets as possible. The clock was ticking as we put the final touches to our holidays with plants and camo nets and material and things and stuff. We were finally done. Hopefully, we'd done enough to impress our judges. Yeah. Whoa! It's starting to take shape, isn't it? Yeah. Take shape? You're not kidding me. I don't think there's a viewer out there who, like me, isn't looking at that screen and thinking, yeah, I'd like that, 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 that for my back garden, please. I want to go back there, actually. To back <laughs> I mean, from the patio heater, which I thought was really cool, yeah. because it was a very elegant device that you wouldn't really see in the back garden, right? Mm. Right up to your swimming pool, which <gasps> I've got to say, eclipsed everything. The well, swim spa. Three, 3D projector, you see, mm, yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There are so many things there. There are so many great gadgets featured in our summer special. And if you'd like to find out more details about any of our summer tech, then go to our website at www.5.tv slash gadget show. So exciting. And so is the Gadget Show competition, which it's time for right now. And this week, it's very, very special. But the, the question is, you know, what does it feel like, you know, to be a, a Gadget Show winner, to get that phone call? What goes through your mind? But well, we hope that we might be able to give you something of a glimpse. That's right. We sent a camera crew along to find out how someone reacts when they win 182 gadgets. And this is how the winner of our biggest ever gadget competition to date reacted. We're in Wales to meet Greg Baker, the man lucky enough to win an amazing 182 gadgets. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, it goes on forever. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Can't wait to get it open. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> and maybe some time. Uh, it makes me feel like... Uh, <laughs> His incredible haul included our top five digital photo frames, a Pyramat gaming chair, and three flat screen TVs. He also won all of our top five flying toys. You've got to be really short to use it, man. Top five scooters. 
top five frisbees, an iPhone, and a Cobb barbecue. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the law, apparently. I've just been told that uh, we've got to keep it all. Yeah, sorry about that. Not only that, but he won a BMW Zeppelin mini iPod dock. The sound on that is amazing. A Magimix food processor and a Marin Ridge mountain bike. <laughs> I got a bike and everything. And that was just the tip of the iceberg of Gadge. Is, is that that's it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After everything was inside, Greg revealed an amazing secret. I've never entered the competition before, so the first time and the the once only text I sent in, um, I couldn't ask for better. Really, I'm still gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked, and I'm also stuck. Really. <laughs> I got a phone call from Susie, and uh, I didn't believe it was Susie. <laughs> Hello, it's Susie Perry from The Gadget Show. Hello. You are the winner of our biggest prize fund ever. You're joking. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> For real. But now everything had arrived, Greg accepted it wasn't a wind-up. I've got to say to Susie, I'm very sorry, Susie, I didn't realise it was you on the telephone, but uh, thank you very much. He could barely contain his enthusiasm and wanted to have a go on everything straight away. It's not charged yet. He even went for a run in his new Asics Gel Kayano trainers. I'm keep these on now for the rest of the day. And just when he thought he'd seen everything. Oh my god. <laughs> you open the box and there's a million more things. There's loads. Look, there's this and there's more and things and look. I think he's dead chuffed, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah. I want one. I've got one. Hey! Thanks, Gadget Show. Thank you very much. Oh, I want well to be Greg. Greg. Isn't he all, isn't he lovely <laughs> on his on his bicycle there with the cardboard still on it? <laughs> oh. Like a little boy on Christmas Day. I want Brilliant. one of these. Oh, I've got one. <laughs> yeah. I've got one! <laughs> you know what? Greg won our biggest prize fund ever, 182 gadgets. But you could be about to go one better. Yes, because this week we are giving away in our biggest prize fund ever. Drum roll, please. Check it out! 183 <laughs> separate <laughs> gadgets. That's 100, all right? Plus 80, and then you've got the three. <laughs> wow! Just someone slap me, all right? <laughs> it's a completely life-changing prize fund, and it could be all yours. So, Susie, <clears throat> what could they win? Well, Otis, they could win all of this. You can win a beach holiday for two people, including flights and full board to the Caribbean island of St Lucia. On top of that, there's a Roberts Dab Solar Radio, a Sony Alpha 850 DSLR camera and a Canon Pixmar printer. An Aaron Falls Cascade indoor waterfall, a Griffin Evolve wireless sound system. A pair of AK-47 water pistols, the Weber Summit S650 barbecue, which came out top in our testing, plus all three gadget sunglasses, which John tested in LA. A 40-watt Adastra grey rock speaker, a Chill Chaser Zeus patio heater, and a Naturo Pure HF380 Intelligent Air Purifier. A 50-inch plasma TV, a 40-inch LCD TV, a 32-inch LCD TV, a Blu-ray player with Blu-ray movies, a Panasonic compact digital camera, a MacBook laptop, a TomTom Go live sat-nav, a BMW Zeppelin mini iPod dock, a Wii, a Wii Fit and a DSi. An Xbox 360, a PS3, a PSP Go, a Pyramac gaming chair and games for all the consoles and a year subscription to Xbox Live. Our top five home security gadgets, our top five USB gadgets, our top five sports watches, our top five lights and our top five RC flying toys. Our top five scooters, our top five toys, our top five kites, our top five frisbees and our top five digital photo frames. An Altec Lansing In Motion Max iPod dock, an iPhone, a Rovio mobile webcam and a 5.1 surround sound speaker system. An Arcos 5 portable media player and a Sanyo Xacti waterproof camcorder. A Flip Video Ultra HD, an iPod Touch, an all-be electric toothbrush and a Slingbox Pro. A Surefire E1 backup torch, a Boardman Comp SC road bike, a Roberts Ecologic 2 dab radio and a pair of Salomon Cosmic walking boots. A Gorillapod, a Berghaus Bioflex rucksack, a Magimix food processor, a Power 8 workshop and a Philips juicer. A Yogi Gatekeeper Pico, a Jawbone Noise Assassin headset and a Philips wake-up light. A Cobb barbecue, an Aladdin Challenger flask, a pair of Skullcandy TI headphones, a Lingo voice translator and an Apple TV. A Breville toaster, a copy of Windows 7, a copy of FX Home Special Effects software and a Dyson Ball vacuum cleaner. A D-Link Wi-Fi router, an Amazon Kindle e-reader, a Marin Berlinas Ridge and a Samsung NC10 netbook. It is, of course, the biggest bundle of goodies we've ever 
are given away, and it's worth nearly 29 grand. And to be in with the chance of winning everything you see before you right now, you'll need to know the answer to this question. The song, Summer Nights, is from what movie starring John Travolta? Is it A, Grease, B, Face Off, or C, Pulp Fiction? To enter, call 0904 161655, or text A, B, or C to 63555, or send your answer name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or a sealed envelope to Gadget Show 16, PO Box 46556, London N1, 0, WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on the 24th of May and three days later for postal entries. And of course, we'll show you the question again at the end of the show. Welcome back, and you're just in time to catch the final part of our summer special holiday challenge. Yeah, Susie and I had to create the ideal holiday destination using the best tech we could lay our hands on. Yeah, I'd gone for an adrenaline fueled adventure type holiday. And I'd opted for a chill out, put your feet up, relax, read a book, maybe have a cocktail type beach holiday. <laughs> you know what? And you guys have <laughs> really delivered the goods. Honestly, really impressive tech. But, you know, it doesn't matter what I think because one of them is going to win, OK? And that's going to be judged by a celebrity family. So, let's meet them. In just under 24 hours, we both turned some derelict stables into gadget versions of our dream holidays. We'd worked into the night and finished off in the morning, but we'd done it. My action-packed adventure holiday was ready to entertain. And my luxury beach holiday was ready to relax. They looked good, but they still had to impress our judges, who are one of the most dysfunctional families in the world of soaps. Brian, Natalie and Dominique play the Valentine family in Hollyoaks, with Joel playing the bad boy boyfriend. They could certainly do with a holiday based on their character's argumentative exploits. I thought something had happened to you, you stupid little cow! You don't mind asking about an attack like I did it? <sighs> Bitch! OK, guys, you've got an hour to experience each one of our gadget holidays. And to start off the proceedings, we're going to toss the coin. Call it, Suze. OK, heads. <gasps> yes! Heads it is! Right! That's not good news for me. My side first. OK, wait, 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 wait. Three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you! Right, come over here, guys. Leaping into action, we first checked out my adventure accommodation, which seemed to go down well. That's a berry. Here I come. After bickering about who would get the upstairs bedroom... I've already claimed it. I've already claimed it. <laughs> but I'm in it. It was time to move on. Right, come on, you like... We headed inside. In. Indiana Jones, eat your heart out. And the exercise bikes immediately caught their eye. Fancy a race? The Trickster Extreme Bike Simulators provided some exhausting entertainment. It changes when you go uphill. How's that? Sensors throughout the bike make it harder to pedal when you're going uphill in the game. Other sensors monitor your body's position on the bike and also the steering to control the character. It all makes for an ultra-realistic experience. <laughs> you race against each other on screen, which was enough motivation for Joel to pedal to victory. Oh. Yes! Yes! Oh. Oh. Race done, we headed outside to climb the Rock Simulator. It's a two-person, computer-controlled, rotating, tilting climbing wall with 16 different difficulty settings. Joel, ready? I'm ready. Dom, ready? Ready! Here you go! Yeah, 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 Dom. Come on, Joel, Joel. Joel! I can hear you, you know, Brian. A favourite of the military, the climbing simulator's wall rotates and you climb using the 360 handhold positions. It can also be found in gyms and hired out for events. Come on, Dom, keep your legs moving. It speeds up to make it more difficult, and for the ultimate challenge, it tilts up to a 90-degree overhang. Can I have an overhang? Oh, my God. Hold on. With the wall tilting further and further, it was just too much for Dom. Go on, Dom, keep going. Go There was just enough time left for the tired Joel to try out the swim spa. It's pretty hard to drag you back really quick. With the six mile an hour current flowing, the rest of the family took the opportunity for a bit of verbal revenge on the previously victorious Joel. What, what, what style is that? Erratic style. Hey. Luckily for Joel, Susie's time was up and I stepped in. <laughs> what is this? Erratic man, style. this is like some kind of torture. <laughs> It was time to show our judges the joys of my beach holiday. We're on the beach, baby. Starting with accommodation. Welcome 
checking out the camplet, I knew the guys were impressed. Come to my gaff. But I knew it wasn't all about accommodation. Step in. If I was going to compete with Susie, they needed entertainment, and I laid on everything, even a tiki bar complete with hula girl and mechanical cocktail maker. <laughs> to ensure complete relaxation, they didn't even have to exert themselves mixing their own drinks. At the push of a button, this gadget did it all for them. While Brian chilled at the tiki bar, the girls were enjoying the Zeus patio heater. Yeah, I'm loving this. With its innovative carbon fiber heating tubes, it not only provides instant heat, but cuts carbon dioxide emissions by 50% compared with gas patio heaters. But it was the Griffin iPod dock with wireless speakers that really captured everyone's attention. You can oh, place cool. them anywhere, oh, yeah? That's cool. I really like this. <laughs> Everyone seemed to feel the benefits of the negative ions from my Natura Pure. Oh, I feel oh, like really serene. That. Tranquil. That is down to this baby here. That's why you're feeling. Oh, this would be nice to be in, in the house as well, yes. in the home. I'll sort you out. With my hour nearly up, I just had time for what I hoped would be my challenge winner, my Hydropool hot tub. Oh. Jump in, jump in. Is that? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, guys, so how's that working out for you? Uh, Very yeah? well, yeah. I've got a little something extra. Oh. The Hydropool has a built-in TV, DVD player, iPod dock and surround sound speakers. Oh, that's so cool. It is the ultimate in relaxation and I want it in. Good, isn't it? Oh, you know what we're missing? What are we missing? Some drinks. Oh. Hey, drop the drinks, jump in and join us. Yeah. Just when we were getting properly relaxed, hey. Susie popped up. It's make your mind up time. <laughs> While we looked on nervously, the judges deliberated. No, well, yeah, I but think what about I'm... the wall? That was great exercise and yeah. fun. Yeah. And you that... felt more alive when you came off the bike. I'm kind of like torn because there's elements of that that, that I really like yeah. and elements of this that I really like. The TV in the, in the, the pool. The... Oh, yeah. It was a winner, wasn't it? The TV in the pool. We'd both done an amazing job, but there could only be one winner. Okie dokie. Discussion time over. We think it looked like a tough decision. Was it? <laughs> it was. Really. Yeah. So what have you decided? What is your decision? Is it Otis or is it me? <clears throat> Drum roll, please. It's Susie's action. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey. Well done, Susie. <laughs> well done, Susie. Great choice of family. What a, what a brilliant group of judges. They, they were, were wonderful great. guests. They were really, really into it and yeah. very funny as well, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. I've got to say, I would spend several days at either of your holiday destinations. Thank and you. do you know what's best about them? I wouldn't have to dice it with volcanic ash <laughs> to get there. You know? And what it also proves, my friends, is that you can have a wonderful summer holiday in Wolverhampton. <laughs> and on that note, that's all we've got time for. We'll see you next <laughs> time. Bye.